Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I just now finished my Murder Hornet helmet mask. In fact, it's still kind of wet and I'm a little bit nervous about picking it up, but I'm going to do it. Now, if you saw the last video, you saw that I built this guy over a glass bowl and it turns out that I, I didn't get it quite <laughs> centered <laughs> properly. So it's not quite the same on both sides, but I don't think anybody's going to notice it, except you guys, of course. I've decided, I've, I've looked at a whole lot of photographs of the murder hornet uh, close-up faces, and I think that the ones that are really um, bright red or orange are probably photoshopped. But this is Halloween. <laughs> it's a Halloween color. So I decided to go with it. If I was trying to be a little bit more realistic, I would probably give it a transparent wash or glaze, I should say, of a lighter orange. But I'm not going to because this is this is perfect for Halloween. And I decided not to give it eye holes because if I wear it like this, I don't have to take my glasses off. But he's still a hornet. And if I was actually going to go trick-or-treating, I could still wear my, you know, my virus mask. So I think this would be more comfortable. Um, a black one would be perfect, or or bright orange. Either one would be would really work. Now, <laughs> I'm not actually going to go trick or treating. <laughs> if you saw my last video, you saw that I was using that bowl, and I had it covered with uh, crumpled uh, aluminum foil to make all the shapes. Then I covered it with paper mache first, and then a layer of um, paper mache clay. You can't leave all that stuff on the inside. Obviously, you don't want to walk around with a bowl on your head. So I took the bowl out and I removed all of the aluminum foil from the inside of it. The paper mache clay was a little, well, a whole lot more textured than usual because I made half of a batch. I did not measure the ingredients this time like I usually do. I just kind of threw everything in the bowl and it turned out to be a lot stiffer than I would normally use. Um, it's still worse. It still dries hard as a rock, but it, it did have a lot of texture to it. So I went ahead and covered it with a really thin paper thing layer of drywall joint compound. It's the, you know, the premix kind that we use in the paper mache clay. So I had it on hand. Uh, once that's on there, it dries really fast. I just spread it over the mask with my fingers and then after about maybe 15 minutes I went back over it with a damp finger and just smoothed it off really good. Um, that way I didn't have to sand it or anything. It's still not like um, a museum quality <laughs> portrait of a hornet but this is for Halloween so I'm not terribly concerned about getting every single thing right. Now, once that was done, I decided that he needed those those three spots right on the top. I really liked those for some reason, and I didn't like the way that I had done it with the paper mache clay. I just put like circles on there. They weren't quite in the middle. <laughs> I don't know, it just wasn't quite doing it for me. So I went through a jar of buttons that I've got, and I found three of them that just happened to be the dome type. They weren't three of the same. Actually, they're all three of them are different, but they're, they're close enough. I drilled holes in the mask so that the shank of the buttons could go into it and then just use some hot glue uh, to get him on there. And then I just took him down to the basement and gave it a real fast spray of white um, primer. He's got a really smooth exoskeleton on his face so I, I just wanted it to be as smooth as possible to start with. When that was dry I drew on the black areas. There's not very much black on this face and it was pretty easy to just draw those spots on and then go back over it with just pure black acrylic paint. Then I mixed up my orange. I grabbed some paint that I happened to have already. It was a, um, a cadmium red, uh, a dark cadmium red. Medium I'm sure would have worked better. I mixed it in with some um, cadmium yellow. I wasn't entirely satisfied with it. It just isn't quite right. It's a little bit um, darker and redder than I really wanted. And then I let that dry and then I did want it to be lighter so I used my stencil brush uh, and added a whole lot of the cadmium yellow and a whole lot of my um, satin glazing liquid from the Golden Company just to make the, the light yellow transparent so that a lot of the orange would show through. And I just uh, dabbed that on with my stencil brush just to give it a little bit more interest and in, in bring out some of the shapes on the face. 
This, this, this guy is done, except for the fact that he does need a varnish. I'll do that tomorrow after the paint is all completely um, cured. And I thought about painting on some reflection spots on those huge eyes, but I decided that it would actually be more effective to just go ahead and use a gloss uh, varnish over those eyes and let actual light stand in as a reflection. You can see that works even when, when there's no varnish on there at all. And I think that actually looks a little bit more natural on these huge eyes. Um, a, a spot of white on small animal eyes, like almost all of these back here, um, that's how I did it. I don't know if you can see giraffe or not, but um, I just think that this, these eyes are just a little bit too big for that to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and make them really shiny and then um, let the actual lights show through. <laughs> So he's all done. If you made one, I really want to see it. So please come back over to ultimatepapermache.com and click on the link at the top for the Daily Sculptures page and show it off. Um, go ahead and download a, or upload a photograph. Really want to see how these come out. <laughs> it would be really fun. When I asked you guys for uh, ideas for Halloween masks, there were a lot of insects and spiders uh, showed up on that list. So if you make any of those, we want to see them too. <laughs> Now I've almost got my tiger done. As you can see, he's back there. I just have to write the instructions, then put on some paper mache and then paint him. And this is going to take another couple weeks before he actually comes out. But if you'd like to see when it does come out, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the little bell thing so that they'll let you know when the video is done. And in the meantime, go make something and come visit me. UltimatePaperMache.com. I'll see you there.